March 22, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 13 from the New Testament. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his time had come to depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now loved them to the very end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, that he should betray Jesus. Because Jesus knew that the Father had handed all things over to him, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, he got up from the meal, removed his outer clothes, took a towel and tied it around himself. He poured water into the wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to dry them with a the towel he had wrapped around himself. Then he came to Simon Peter. Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not understand what I am doing now, but you will understand after these things. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus replied, The one who has bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not every one of you. For Jesus knew the one who was going to betray him. For this reason he said, Not every one of you is clean. So when Jesus had washed their feet and put his outer clothing back on, he took his place at the table again and said to them, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord and do so correctly, for that is what I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example. You should do just as I have done for you. I tell you the solemn truth. The slave is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent as a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you understand these things, you will be blessed if you do them. What I am saying does not refer to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but this is to fulfill the scripture. The one who eats my bread has turned against me. I am telling you this now before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe that I am he. I tell you the solemn truth, whoever accepts the one I send accepts me, and whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. When he had said these things, Jesus was greatly distressed in spirit and testified, I tell you the solemn truth, one of you will betray me. The disciples began to look at one another, worried and perplexed to know which of them he was talking about. One of his disciples, the one Jesus loved, was at the table to the right of Jesus in a place of honor. So Simon Peter gestured to this disciple to ask Jesus who it was he was referring to. Then the disciple, whom Jesus loved, leaned back against Jesus' chest and asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus replied, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread after I have dipped it in the dish. Then he dipped the piece of bread in the dish and gave it to Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. And after Judas took the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, What you are about to do, do quickly. Now none of those present at the table understood why Jesus said this to Judas. Some thought that because Judas had the money box, Jesus was telling him to buy whatever they needed for the feast, or to give something to the poor. Judas took the piece of bread and went out immediately. Now it was night. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him right away. Children, I am still with you for a little while. You will look for me, and just as I said to the Jewish religious leaders, Where I am going you cannot come. Now I tell you the same. I give you a new commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Everyone will know by this that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? 
Jesus replied, Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow later. Peter said to him, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? I tell you the solemn truth. The rooster will not crow until you have denied me three times. God, it's pretty incredible that your son knew what was about to happen, that he knew that not only was he going to his death, but it would be a horrible and long and drawn out, painful and humiliating death. And yet even going up to these, these final days that took place in his life, he still had the humility and the ability to teach people about love washing someone's feet uh, since most people had sandals and they weren't blessed with concrete back then and everything was dusty when you came into someone's uh, house usually a non-jewish slave would wash your feet and so to have somebody like jesus first and foremost to them a jewish person and then this teacher rabbi who they had spent so much time with in humility washing their feet must have just been astounding to them uh, you can even hear the bafflement in in one of the disciples questions yet through this we see him wash every person's feet including judas who's about to betray him and jesus knew that with without question he knew that judas was about to betray him And yet he still bowed down in front of him, carefully took off his sandals, took his dusty feet in his, gently washed them and wiped them dry with, with the towel covering his body. The person that was about to send him to death. And I think it's even more amazing that in, in verse 2 it talks about how, how Satan had put this thought into Judah's heart. But then later on, as Judas mulled over this and thought about it and, and wasn't heading in the direction of a disciple, of a follower of Christ, then Satan was actually able to enter him and carry out these orders to betray Jesus. Now here's what's so crazy awesome, God. When we talk about you using everything for good, for your good, for your purpose, for your will, for your glory, I'm sure Satan at the time giggled a little bit that he was getting one on over Jesus or even you at the time by taking over one of the disciples and worming his way into their heart and getting them to turn Jesus over to the guards to ultimately be sacrificed. I'm sure for a moment, perhaps even for a few hours, he was absolutely delighted. He had no idea why Jesus needed to be crucified. <sighs> but even that, that sovereign ability that control of the entire world, the God who is so big in my life, able to use Satan's messiness and evilness and cruelty to carry off part of the plan because Jesus had to be sacrificed. Jesus knew before Judas was taken over by Satan. Jesus already knew he was going to be sacrificed. And you, God, were able to use Satan as part of that plan. Ooh, I bet, I bet the devil was so mad at you. So mad when he realized he was actually part of something beneficial to all of these people on earth that he's trying to control and pull away for himself, pull away from you. And yet you've just sacrificed your only begotten son for the forgiveness of all of our sins to take away death and give us life, to give us eternal life with you. 
And Satan was part of the cause of that? Okay, that's just incredible to think about that. God, I know in the end who wins. I know everything between now and the ending gets worse. I totally get that. It's so easy to see in our society how much Satan has gotten into everything. Not in the big way where he has to possess people anymore. All he has to do is throw in front of us a few TV shows and some some carefully worded songs and we're off and running down the path of sin. He's distracted us away from you. And I know in the end you're going to make everything right because you win. In the end, you win. But it's still our responsibility every point from here to the end to tell people about you to show them your love and humility even when they're people like Judas in our life it is our responsibility to reflect your love and the amazing humbleness that your son showed it is our responsibility to glorify you and to glorify you in how our lives look, not just when people are watching, but when they're not watching. In what we say and what we pay attention to online, in the movies we go to see, in the activities we do, the people we hang around, in everything. God, thank you for being a God of everything. Thank you for being a God so big that I can't even imagine it. Thank you for being a God who is sovereign, who in the end wins. Thank you for being a God who can use what the devil wants to do and you can use it for good. That just blows my mind. And thank you for having a son who not only who not only came to earth to become human which just baffles me right there why would you want to do that but then willingly obediently gave up his life for us but while he was here on earth showed us what true love looks like what true humility looks like not just loving the easy people but loving the people who society doesn't love who your neighbors don't love, and who you may not want to love. Jesus was that love while he was here on earth. And now we have that love tucked inside of our heart, and it's time to reflect that out. We are truly the light of this world. You have put that, uh, you have put that light inside of us to glorify you, to tell others about you. Any Christian who's read the Bible and flipped to the last few pages knows who wins. But I guess between now and then, God, to what cost? To what cost do you win? And who will I get to see in heaven? Granted, I am so excited to just spend eternity worshiping you glorifying you in heaven but I want everyone to have that opportunity to I want everyone to have that peace I have inside my heart even though my life is a disaster <laughs> all the time usually by my own choice um, I still have this amazing peace and I know that comes from you and I know you always take my hand and walk with me even when I try and shove you out of my life. So at what cost do we win in the end? It is our responsibility between now and then to tell others about you, to not be fearful of men, but be fearful of you and your power and your might and your just. We don't need to fear 
the devil or Satan. But we do need to recognize his power. At least while we're here on earth. And we need to be really clear about our responsibilities here on earth. And Jesus is really clear. I give you a new commandment to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. Just as I have loved Judas, knowing full well he's going to betray me, you must love people this way. It is not with retaliation or revenge or persnickety comments on Facebook that we're going to win anybody's hearts over and get them to listen when we talk about you. I know you save people, God, but I also know what our responsibility is in this. And the only way that somebody is going to stop and listen to why my life is different and why I want their life to be different is if I truly show them love, unconditional love. In today's reading, Jesus says it's a commandment to love one another just as I have loved you. And he has loved me when I so don't deserve to be loved. I don't deserve anything that you have given me. But he has loved me. And I have received forgiveness. And I have received grace. And I have received mercy. And how dare I just hoard those in my heart and not share them with others. God be with us today as we go out into the world. The armor that's talked about in the Bible. Help us to put that on and allow that to bring us strength in our daily fights out there. Fights that are done so out of love. For your glory. In your loving son's name, we pray. Amen.